Justin Timberlake. I'm bringing sexy back. The Forget Tomorrow World Tour. Live in Memphis. Justin Timberlake. FedEx Forum, Saturday, November 23rd. Get tickets this Thursday at 10 a.m. at LiveNation.com. The brand new single, Selfish, is available to stream and download now. For more, hit up JustinTimberlake.com. Did you do anything in that St. Joe's game? No, I was strictly playing defense. Delonte West was tough. That's a pro. Oh, my God. That step back. Oh, wait, left. hold on. 40 minutes. You didn't even get a rest. No, I played, played the whole 40, game. Six for 11 from the field. That was me. 12 points, six rebounds, five assists. Oh, I was nice that game. <laughs> I thought I ain't getting double figures. The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook, live weekdays at noon on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Vince Williams is going to go to All-Star Weekend. Now, what a great thing for him. Kudos to, to Vince Williams Jr. You know, um, he was an injury replacement on the Panini Rising Stars. He'll get a chance to be part of the All-Star Weekend Showcase. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grisby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. Ford Tough Studio and FedEx Forum. It's the Gary Parrish Show, presented by Ortho South on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Now, here's your host, Gary Parrish. All right. I'm here. My name's Gary Parrish speaking to you from the Bill Ford Tough Studio, FedEx Forum, downtown Memphis. Bennett Doyle's right there producing the program. Glad he's with me. Glad you're with me. Hope you're getting through the day best you can. And I hope, like the rest of us, you enjoyed Monday night's Elite Eight game between LSU Iowa because the official numbers came in last night. And as predicted, it was record setting, even bigger than people anticipated. What does it mean? What does it not mean? We'll talk about it in a second. First though, quickly, let me set today's schedule for you. When I finish this open, we'll take a break, come back. Mike Wallace gonna be in studio with me. Grizz back in action later on tonight. Talk to Mike Wallace about the Grizzlies and all things NBA. Mike Wallace gonna join me. He'll be here in the next segment. When I finish talking to Mike, Take a break, come back, do five more things you need to know. At which one we're going to discuss five previously undiscussed stories. Among them, Memphis football coach Ryan Silverfield has received a contract extension with the Rays. It's effectively now a five-year deal worth $12.25 million. We'll discuss it in about 40 minutes. NC State's DJ Burns is now headed to the Final Four, and some NFL franchises suddenly interested in working him out. Might be a professional football player instead of a professional basketball player. Might sound crazy, but it might work. I'll tell you about it in just a bit. Live with Kelly and Mark. Is airing reruns this week. They're on vacation. Lucky them. But one of the producers, or perhaps multiple producers, who are in charge of, uh, you know, Bennett, when you have to put together, like, best of shows and that kind of stuff? Yep. Oh, buddy, somebody missed something. Somebody missed something. And it went viral pretty quickly. I'll tell you about it in the third segment. The McDonald's All-American game was last night. It seemed what? Like it, <laughs> you didn't even know? No. Okay, you're proving my point. Yeah. Seemed to lack some pop. And it's not because the players in it weren't awesome. Because they were. I'll tell you what I think it is. We'll do that a little later on in the show. And voters in Kansas City have rejected a sales tax designed to build or renovate stadiums for the Chiefs and Royals. Could cost them the Chiefs 
and or the Royals. We'll spend some time on that because there's some news connected to renovations to FedEx Forum this morning. We'll talk about all of it during a segment we call Five More Things You Need to Know. Then we'll eventually do GP's carry out and call today. So that's the rundown. We got a lot to get to. But I did want to start with college basketball because the officials' numbers, they, they came in last night. And, and what we learned is that uh, this week's Elite Eight game between Iowa and LSU, starring Caitlin Clark and Kim Mulkey and Angel Reese, uh, it wasn't just the most watched women's basketball game in history. It had an average viewership of 12.3 million people, which means not only was it the most watched women's basketball game of all time, but it also is the most watched college basketball game of all time on any ESPN platform. Think about that for a second. Think about every Duke, North Carolina game you've ever watched. Number one, Memphis versus number two, Tennessee. Every Kentucky game you've ever seen on ESPN. Every Zion game you watched on ESPN. Every Kevin Durant game you watched on ESPN. Think of every college basketball game you've ever watched on any ESPN channel and just know that no college basketball game you've ever watched on any ESPN channel, men's or women's, has ever been watched by as many people as the 12.3 million people who spent Monday night watching Caitlin Clark in Iowa eliminate Kim Mulkey, Angel Reese, and LSU from the Elite Eight of this 2024 women's NCAA tournament. Big Bet Bennett, we expected a big number. Are you surprised the number was that big? 12.3 million average audience, and it peaked at 16 million. Yeah, I mean, I definitely am surprised it was that big. I, I thought that it was going to be a big number. Um, the biggest college basketball game ever on ESPN. Yeah, that's crazy. Now, granted, ESPN doesn't get the NCAA tournament, right. so th you're not including any of that. Um, you're including what we included, which yes. is like every, like, the, you know, I'm, I'm speaking very yeah, specifically yeah, here. Yeah. Every college basketball game you've ever seen on ESPN, none of them have ever been watched by more people than watch that game Monday yeah, night. And I'm surprised, like you mentioned, like especially like a, you know, you've had some huge Duke, North Carolina games on ESPN. Huge. You know, you've had some really, really big regular season college basketball games on ESPN. So, and again, this is the postseason, but yeah, man, that's, that's pretty impressive. The 12.3 million average audience means that Iowa LSU – had a bigger viewership number than the Purdue-Tennessee Elite Eight game on Sunday in the Elite Eight of the 2024 Men's NCAA Tournament on CBS. 10.4 million people watched that. The final round of last year's Masters, 12.1 million. Iowa LSU did more than that. The 2024 Golden Globes, 9.5 million. Not the Globes. They got the Globes, too. Not the Globes. They got the Globes, too. Four out of the five games in last year's NBA Finals drew smaller audiences than the LSU women against the Iowa women. Every World Series game last year. Okay, that's insane. Drew a smaller number. That's the one right there. <laughs> that's crazy. Imagine going back 40 years ago. All right? I know. And and telling somebody that in the year 2024, I mean, you probably wouldn't want to tell them about the year 2024. It's kind of crazy. You yeah. probably wouldn't want to talk to them about it. That's right. It's kind of nutty out there, you know? I don't know. We're still early in this thing. I wouldn't know if I'd want to talk to them about 2024. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe good things are ahead. Yeah, I doubt it. All right. What have you seen to make you think that? Uh, I'm just, you know, I'm just anticipating good, uh, good things. I'm not. Okay. I can't. Don't, we don't seem headed that direction. Just trying to stay positive. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate the effort, but like, I'm going to live over here in reality. Okay. I ain't so optimistic about our future. But imagine, just for the sake of the conversation, you go back 40 years and you tell somebody, hey, in 2024, a women's college basketball game will outdraw every World Series game from the previous year, plus a major award show, plus the final round of the Masters. What? Crazy. That's where we're at. So 
let me ask you this. Do you think this is just a Caitlin Clark thing, or is this a women's basketball thing that is here to stay? Uh, I think it's a mixture of it was Caitlin Clark, who's become this superstar in the sport, going against uh, a team full of stars that's very polarizing in LSU, and it's kind of a rivalry because LSU beat them last year, and there was trash talking and all that. I think it was a culmination of all that stuff. I think it was a perfect storm. Yeah, yeah. I think it was a perfect – I think the rematch mattered. I think – Angel Reese taunting Caitlin Clark last season while winning a national championship yep. mattered. Honestly, I think all the attention Kim Mulkey got leading into the game mattered. First, her holding a press conference in advance of, of the Washington Post publishing an article about her, and then the article publishing, you know, a couple of days before the game. I think all of that contributed mm -hmm. to it. Caitlin Clark, of course, becoming the Sports all-time leading scorer played a role in it. The way she scores her points played a role in it. You know, Zach Eady also scores a lot of points on the men's side. They they score them very differently. One of them is very fun to watch. That's Kaylin. The other one, people say not so much. That's Zach. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a perfect storm. Although I do believe that this is a a real moment for women's college basketball. I'm not sure if it's a real moment for women's basketball, broadly speaking, like whether it'll impact and trickle up, if you will, to the WNBA. I'm not sure. But I do believe this is a real moment for women's college basketball. And I don't think it's solely, solely because of Caitlin Clark. She's the biggest reason, no, no question. But I don't think it's just her. I think people also have real interest in UConn and Paige Beckers. I think people also have real interest in Dawn Staley. I think people also, before they were eliminated, had real interest in Kim Mulkey and, and Angel Reese. I, I think women's basketball at the collegiate level is in a place it's better than it's ever been. But I do think what happened Monday night was a byproduct of mostly just a perfect storm of everything you could get to make people who otherwise wouldn't care say, I've got to tune into this one. Yes, the racial component probably plays a role in it as well. When your two stars are Angel Reese and, and Caitlin Clark. All of it. Mix it all up. You get a record-setting number. And oh, by the way, I saw this on X last night. Somebody who follows television ratings and stuff like that said that Caitlin Clark and Iowa this season have now set television records for the most watched women's game ever on seven different networks. That's wild. Fox, ABC, NBC, Big Ten Network, FS1, Peacock, and ESPN. On each of those networks, the most watched women's basketball game ever at any level came this season, and it came with Caitlin Clark in Iowa. So that highlights how she and they are the biggest part of that. But women's basketball in general is in a, a wonderful place right now. And so if people could just stop right there, then the conversation would remain sensible. What happens, though, when things like this happen is that some people sometimes get a little too caught up in it and start taking it places it does not need to go and where it does not belong. And you've seen some of that over the past few days. There's two that stand out. One is undeniably untrue just because the numbers are the numbers. And the other is just so absurd I can't even understand how any professional speaker who works in sports could, could say it out loud. But we've seen it this week. The one is that, oh, because... Caitlin Clark and Iowa and LSU and Angel Reese and Kim Mulkey had an audience of 12.3 million, a bigger number than Purdue and Tennessee. And Iowa and LSU is the most watched college basketball game ever on any ESPN channel, men's or women's. Some people have decided. And because this women's Final Four is awesome and could like maybe do comparable numbers or even bigger numbers than the men's Final Four. We'll see, right? We'll see. Some have taken all this information and then used it to frame an argument that this now means the women's 
game is bigger than the men's game. That's undeniably untrue. Like, it is true that Iowa LSU, the biggest game in women's basketball history, the women's, the biggest game in ESPN history, drew a bigger number than Purdue, Tennessee. You know what it didn't do, though? It didn't draw a bigger number than Duke, NC State in the Elite Eight. The men's tournament is still way bigger than the men's tournament in every way you can slice it up. But that Caitlin Clark game against LSU was bigger than most games on either side, but not bigger than all. Not bigger than a game that was played one day earlier on the men's side, that Duke NC State game. So it's okay to acknowledge that what we're watching here is historic and historically important, but we don't have to make it out to be something it's not. This doesn't mean women's basketball is about to be the NFL. It just means that women's basketball is at a place it's never been, and it's awesome. But you don't have to make it out to be something mm. it's not. Same thing with Caitlin Clark. You've seen this? Like actual people who get paid to do this, speaking into a mic, saying that Caitlin Clark does not need to accept an offer from Ice Cube to go to the Big Three for millions of dollars, nor does she need to go to the WNBA, that Caitlin Clark should just go to the NBA. People have said this. Like legitimate people who you've seen on TV, who speak into microphones for a living, have started to make the case that Caitlin Clark is so gifted that she, she should try to play in the NBA. Now, I love Caitlin Clark. I think she's amazing. I watch her every chance I get. She is a world-class shooter who could flourish at a three-point shooting contest against just about, if not anybody in the world, men or women. She's an amazing competitor, an amazing shooter, an amazing basketball player. She could not sniff the NBA. What are we talking about? You want to know what else she couldn't sniff? The Big Ten men's tournament. Like she's six foot nothing. I don't know why we can't just appreciate her for what she is without trying to take it to a place where it so clearly doesn't belong. Because then it ends up in a conversation where it sounds like you're tearing down this amazing woman to, to prove that she's not a man, which is not even a conversation we should be having anyway. So it's really counterproductive. I know people think when they say things like Caitlin Clark could play on the men's side or Caitlin Clark could play in the NBA, I know they think they're complimenting her. They're not. They're actually setting her up to be discounted and dismissed. Because every time somebody says something so stupid as Caitlin Clark could play in the NBA with men, it invites other people to explain why she so obviously couldn't. And then we're in a conversation focused on things we shouldn't be focused on, saying things we shouldn't even be saying. So, like, let's just leave it where it's at. Caitlin Clark is an amazing women's basketball player who is doing amazing things for the women's game. But it doesn't mean that you could throw her into the NBA playoffs or even the G League and that it would go okay. There's a reason women's college basketball exists and the WNBA exists. And it's because the just physical nature of it is totally different. Totally different. So I get real frustrated when I hear people say things like that. I know their intentions are good. Their motives are pure. They think they're complimenting this incredible athlete that we're all watching do incredible things but you're not you're just making a, a silly nonsensical point and so let's just let her be what she is which is very incredible and accomplished and amazing in this space that has been created but when you start trying to take these awesome things that are happening and pull them in other directions well that's when you end up going too far mike wallace will be in studio next We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Bally Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Bally Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Bally Sports and streaming on the Bally Sports app. Bally Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Gasol with four seconds for the win. Yes! 
Mark is one of the more competitive people you'll meet. You ain't lose. Their willingness to go out and try to compete every day, not just wait for a game, not wait for a regular season game, not wait for a playoff game, but every day is what made Mark special. He was a big part of that identity, right? And a big part of that's why the, the team was so successful, because they had that anchor in him. The Grizzlies, to this day, wouldn't be the Grizzlies without the contribution of Marcus Gasol. Real country music. With Cody Johnson, live, Saturday, April 13th at FedEx Forum, country's best, The Leather Tour, with Cody Johnson, with special guest Justin Moore, also featuring Drake Milligan, VIP and reserve seats on sale at Ticketmaster.com in the FedEx Forum box office, Cody Johnson. Justin Timberlake. The Forget Tomorrow World Tour. Live in Memphis. Justin Timberlake. FedEx Forum, Saturday, November 23rd. Get tickets this Thursday at 10 a.m. at LiveNation.com. The brand new single, Selfish, is available to stream and download now. For more, hit up JustinTimberlake.com. You saw with four seconds for the win. Yes! Mark is one of the more competitive people you'll meet. You ain't lose. Their willingness to go out and try to compete every day, not just wait for a game, not wait for a regular season game, not wait for a playoff game, but every day is what made Mark special. He was a big part of that identity, right? And a big part of that's why the, the team was so successful because they had that anchor in him. The Grizzlies, to this day, wouldn't be the Grizzlies without the contribution of Mark Gasol. Welcome back. Gary Parish Show presented by Ortho South. I'm inside the Bill Ford Tough Studio. It's a rare, it's a it's a rare occasion. And look who it is right here. It's Mike Wallace. My mic check on X. We're in the same place, in the Again. same city. This Again. is amazing. Twice, two, two times in a row, man. This is amazing. Yes. This is amazing. Yes. I, I I see you more than I see <laughs> most people I'm related to these days. <laughs> happy to happy to have you in studio. That's crazy. Um so hey, before, this might not happen the rest of the year after this. <laughs> so so um you travel a lot. Yes. You're not yes, in Milwaukee. Yes. No. Do you start making now like uh, sort of business decisions? Like, okay, I don't need to be like we're almost to the finish line. How do yeah, you how do yeah. you coordinate all that? I coordinate it now based on uh, availability. Okay. Right. Because we're running out of, of times where we can the players will be available for the media mm-hmm. and for us. So it, I need to maximize how many more days of. You know, will I get to talk to Jaron Jackson Jr. Right. in a public setting or Desmond Bain or these kind of guys? So I, I make my schedule over these last two, three weeks just based on that. So I took this trip off, but I had a pretty good reason. Like yeah. Saturday, um, you know, was my youngest daughter's 12th birthday. Yeah. And then yesterday was uh, was my second anniversary, wedding anniversary mm-hmm. uh, with my wife. So I couldn't be in uh, Orlando, yeah, in, in Detroit, <laughs> you know, for anniversary and a birthday. That the, wasn't going to happen. I stupidly yeah. got married in July. Mm-hmm. Before I realized I would be spending every July on the yeah. road um, for college basketball recruiting. Yep. Like I got yep. married in the middle of an evaluation period. Yep. And <laughs> I have spent maybe half of my anniversaries, uh-huh. at least like the first half of them yeah. um, in Las Vegas. <laughs> like, right. you know, right. either I would take my wife or mm-hmm. not be with her. But like I we would we very infrequently had a normal anniversary because I was yeah. always on the road. Yeah. I didn't anticipate. Yeah. I don't guess I didn't, I didn't think. I guess when I was that age, I didn't think much through too well. But certainly my I didn't properly pick Your a schedule. I didn't yeah. properly pick a wedding date. There's no like like I remember uh, uh, Pat Riley used to say all the time that, you know, his wife, Chris, you know, they're still married. Yeah. I mean, 50 years in now, um, she had to understand right off the top, right, that for eight months, he was off limits. Right. But for four months, she had him, anything she wanted him to do, he would do. So basically, that's how kind of, you know, the schedule works out, man. It's like I miss a whole lot of stuff, unfortunately, and I yeah. have missed a lot of, of band concerts and different things, games and stuff. But the thrill ride that my kids have gotten growing up, and I have adult kids all the way down to 12, 
the thrill ride that they've gotten along the ride, you know, um, while I've been covering these games and these these leagues has been phenomenal, man. So it's like the trade off is always tough, and you know that, yeah. You know what I mean. But at the end of the day, man, there's a lot of benefits too. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I ask my son all the time, hey. Would you want to trade places with JP, your best friend? Yeah. Like, would you want to trade <laughs> places with him? And he's always like, nah, dad, we got, we good, we good. So that's the question, man. A better question I have for you. Okay. Before we get into this other yeah. stuff. Yeah. We were talking about this briefly off air. Um, if you're in a situation where you can be upgraded to first class uh -huh. or your wife can be upgraded to first uh -huh. class, you only get one ticket. Right. Do you give that to her? Yeah. Or should yes, she the answer is yes. <laughs> should, should she be happy if you get it and she doesn't? Are you cool with that? Or do you have to sacrifice a first flight just to sit and coach with her? You have to no, no. You have to always offer it. Yes, you offer it. Right, right. I, I think you you now we've done every 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 combination every, you can think of <laughs> every match under of these that. circumstances <laughs> yes, we've yes, done. Yeah, there has been circumstances where we only have one first uh -huh. class seat, and I say, hey, you take it. You know, enjoy yourself. Yes, and uh, that's 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 always option one. That's one. That's one. Sometimes it'll be like, hey, you can have this, but I really got a lot of work to do, mm -hmm. and it's just easier to work with space. And she's yeah. like, I don't care, it's fine. And then boom, we'll have that conversation. Okay, right. Okay. But that's always option. That's down the list. <laughs> and then there's one where, hey, we want to sit together. Uh -huh. Let's just offer our first class seat to somebody sitting next to you and coach or me and coach, and then they'll be happy to go upgrade, and then we'll just sit. To, and I've side done that. Side. And yeah. I did that with yeah. my son. Uh -huh. um, we had me and my son, only my 10-year-old, yes. were on a trip together, and it was like they complimentary upgraded me, but not him. And right. I was like, right. I, I don't want him sitting by himself up there or me by my, by yes. either one. Him back there, yes. So yes. I just yes. gave our, my seat to a woman and I sat in the back with him and she was thrilled. Um, but I, I think that the, the, you always have to offer. If you don't yeah. offer it, yeah. you're going to end up, you think, God, I hope she, you'll, <laughs> you'll sit in first class with your wife in the back and you'll feel awful the entire time. <laughs> you, you'll feel worse sitting in first class with your wife in the back than yeah. you will feel sitting in the back. Okay, okay. So you just have right, to do right, it. Right, 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 right. Do you okay, disagree? Okay. Do you have a different no, sentiment? No, I mean, I've experienced all of them too. Right. And I think where I, where I get the biggest issue with that is at what point do you say, all right, it doesn't, if you have a family of mm -hmm. four, right. right? You and your kids and, your, and, and Ben is going to have this too coming up and he has probably will. At what point are you okay with saying, we don't have to sit together? Like if you're on the Southwest, like Southwest yeah. is, okay, there might be two seats open here and a seat here and then a seat there. Yeah. Right. At what point are you like, all right, man, we're old enough now where we don't have to sit together? I I want to sit with my kids. They're still young enough to where mm -hmm. I don't want them with other adults. So what what age are your kids? Ten and seven. Ten. Okay. My little guys. Okay. Okay. You okay. know. Yeah. 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 But yeah. Uh, so I would want to sit with them. That would right. be a deal breaker to not right. be with them. Right. But but just for instance, mm -hmm. today we're getting on a flight to go to Phoenix, and um, it's Delta flight. We have to connect. But my. My flight was booked by my company yeah. months ago. Different, right. And right. then at the last minute, kind of, we decided my wife's going to go with me. So we are on di we are on the same flight today, but we have different seats. Mm -hmm. And just to circle this back, <laughs> she has been upgraded already, <laughs> and I'm waitlisted. And so we could have this situation where I'm just going to take my seat. She can have the first class. I think we're both upgraded for part of it, but maybe not the second part of it. Yeah, she's, yeah. But I don't know. But I... I, I uh, we might not sit together today, and that's mm. fine. I don't mm. mind that so mm. much because, mm. like, she's got work to do. I got work to do. We spend right. a lot of time together anyway. Like, right. you know, we'll, we'll, right. Like, right. We, right. We, we've been together 20 years. We've said a lot of – we know <laughs> – there ain't nothing. I don't have a new story for her. You know, it's not like I could tell her something she doesn't know already. <laughs> right, so right, uh, we right. might not sit together today, and that would yeah. be that would be fine. And sometimes when we have the kids, it's yeah. be like, all right, I'll take Lou, you take Oliver. Right, that, right, that'll be okay. fine. Right, right, but um, right, right, yeah, I think right. at this point, we if we. We prefer to sit together, but yes. we don't. We don't have to. Okay, it's not All a deal breaker. Right. That clears it up. I just it, wanted to make sure my situation I, wasn't. You know, I wasn't the only one going through trying to figure out this, you know, no, this but, travel arrangement. Okay, yeah. here's the one that got me. Yeah, and I I couldn't believe that this guy did this. I told this story before. So there's one time I'm getting on a plane, and you got like, and I'm not trying to flex. It's just a. It's just I don't. It's, I, it's how we do it. It's this how we do it. This, this is part of the job. Like, when job. you travel nonstop. Yeah. yeah. You're going to end up in these situations. Yeah. So it's like you've got seat 2A, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm getting on the plane, and there's a man in 2B and a woman in 2A. Mm -hmm. There's a woman clearly in my seat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you do that thing. Hey, excuse me. Uh, it, it might be my mistake. You know it's not your mistake. But, <laughs> hey, I, I think I have 2A. You show them. And uh, the guy goes, I swear to God, this guy goes, yeah, um, uh, 
my this is my wife and i was gonna see if she could just sit with me here in 2a and if you could take her seat and i was like yeah sure whatever what, what's her seat assuming he's gonna say 1b <laughs> right, or 3a or, so. <laughs> or 4d you know another first class seat and he was like 27b and i said bro i'm not going to 27b <laughs> and he goes um well like my wife's sitting here you, you're, you're gonna make my wife move we want to sit together oh i said that's problematic i said yeah. uh yeah, I'm not making your wife move. You could move. But like I'm I'm going to sit in one of these seats. I'm happy to sit next to your wife. I'm going to sit next to you or your wife. <laughs> you choose. You, I, it doesn't matter to me. This is right. between you guys. But it's kind of crazy you think I'm just going to go to 27C so you and your wife can sit together. Why don't you go to 27C so me and your wife can sit together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was he got frustrated and I swear, do you know what he did? He made his wife get up. Oh, wow. And wow. she went to the back and I sat with this guy. And you sat with this dude the whole flight. That's yes. awkward. <laughs> it was just, but I was, I did, you shouldn't even put me in that situation. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that's a yeah, crazy that's thing to yeah. ask somebody. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like if you're at a concert and you're on the, you have a front row ticket, if you if that's what you like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and, and you go to your seat and somebody's in your seat. They say, uh, hey, could you switch seats to my wife? We want to sit together. And you're like, sure. And they're like, yeah, we're up there. <laughs> So you just go up there and my wife will say, it's like, no, we're not doing that. Yeah, that's, that's, like, how yeah. could you even think that's a reasonable thing to ask somebody? Yeah, that's not, and, and I can't even understand or I can't fathom any way that I would even consider that. No, it's crazy. Maybe there has to be a disability or something. Yeah, like, man, you put on like some <laughs> army gear and I'll think about it. You know, I thought, I'll think about thanking you for your you service. Need, you need like a neck brace or an <laughs> yes. arm sleeve or something. You, you, <laughs> yeah, you better, have a, you better have a baby and a neck brace and some army gear on and I'll think about it. If you have a window seat in the back, but a middle seat in the back, you could, you could have sacrificed your anything for our country. And I'd be like, I appreciate your service, but you got to go to the back, brother. I appreciate your service, but I'm not sitting Thanks back. For your service. Thank, thank you for your service. Now keep it moving. I'm not saying there's no oh, scenario man. where I wouldn't be agreeable, but I'm saying there's not many. There's not many scenarios where I'd be. I don't even know where to go from there, man. That was great. That was... <laughs> I'm talking to Mike Wallace in studio. Hey, I think uh, yeah, last time yeah. we were talking, we were wondering what it might look like when Brandon Clark came back. Yes. Now yes, we know. Yes, it's yes. encouraging, right? Uh, he's, mm -hmm. he's looked the part. Even some have suggested better than expected. Oh, there, no question about it. I mean, for him to miss an entire calendar year, and to come back and still show some of that pop. Now, he's not as explosive, but that's understandable. Sure. The fact that he's playing 20-plus minutes a game, uh, which is what he's averaged. Like, he's only – he's doing right now what he's averaged for his first four years. Right. You know, double-digit points, five, six, seven rebounds, 21 minutes a game. So, he's giving you that now. Um, what they did against Detroit, he and Jaron Jackson combined for 55 points, 14 rebounds. And they shot almost 60% from the field together. So, that gives you a glimpse – at what half of the power rotation is going to look like going forward into next year. You know Jaron is going to be there. You know BC is going to be there. Now what are they going to do with the other two you know, spots um, at the power forward and center spots, either as a starter or a backup in combination? So that's the biggest question going in. But Brandon looks great. Uh, he talked about how much this was important to him to, to complete that cycle. And, um, you know, it's good to see his teammates rally around him the way he is, too. I love to hear him talking trash, man. He's out there talking trash to guys, um, and, and he's he's really responding the way that he needs to respond. Tonight, they're in Milwaukee yeah. uh, playing the Bucks. Obviously, it's Giannis, it's Dame. Are you a believer in this Milwaukee team as constructed? Like, they, yeah, that's a yeah. team that can get to the finals. That's a team that can win a championship. Well, that's the thing. Like, Dame, we don't know what his situation right. is. It's been mysterious these last few days. At first, he was uh, out with one injury. Then he had a personal reason for missing the right. game. Now they're saying it's a hamstring. So it's kind of all over the place with his availability in the midst of answering questions about how happy are you in Milwaukee right. this year. So there's something going on there. Um, but I do think that the Grizzlies have a chance to, you know, go out there and make Milwaukee work. Right. Last time they played, they beat Milwaukee going into the All-Star right. break. Right. And you saw a great game from Gigi Jackson and Zaire Williams. Zaire's not there, obviously, in, from a health standpoint. 
Uh, but you can still put some encouraging film on tape the rest of the way and see if you can build off of this with, with the kind of rotations that you have. I'm not sure how much, how many more games they're going to ask Jaron Jackson to have to play. Um, now that he's reached the 65 game threshold to to qualify for league honors, um, but at this at this point, man, you, you're at you're coming down the stretch with these last seven games. After tonight, five out of the last six are going to be at home, and I think you're going to see a lot of different combinations of guys at the back end of the roster getting the opportunity. On the subject of do you believe in this team? Yeah. Um, I saw an interview with Pat Beverly. I, I see mm -hmm. more interviews with Pat Beverly than I do basketball games with Pat yeah, Beverly. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he's a, yeah. an accomplished speaker, and um, he was or a relentless one. Or a relentless <laughs> right, one. How about right, this? Right. He's a constant talker. <laughs> that's it. That's I don't it. know if he's accomplished, but he's, a, he's he does it a lot. Right, right. right. So he was telling a story about I think it was uh, some interaction with Shea Gilgis Alexander mm -hmm. perhaps after um, a game and Shea said something along the lines of hey you know we'll see you in wherever mm -hmm. uh, the, this, in, you know, we'll see you in the f you know, well it had to be the finals right, right. Yeah, we'll see yeah. you in the finals right and he said nah you, you can't get there mm -hmm. and, and the co-host was like you don't think they can get there and he's like nah too young it feels like the same type of stuff people would say about the Grizzlies a few years mm -hmm. ago, mm -hmm. as recently as a couple of years ago yeah. at least, yeah. that even though they were in the top two in the West for two straight years, people thought they're too young to actually mm -hmm. get it done. Mm -hmm. Is too young to get it done a real thing in the NBA and something that should be applied to Oklahoma City? I think it's a real thing uh -huh. uh, for different reasons, right? I, I think you have to have some level of – you're not just going to end up in the finals like a one-year wonder for right. the most part. Usually this is a veteran team. Like Denver wasn't too young. They were right when they needed That's to be right. there. They had some heartbreak along the way. I think the way the West is right now, you could easily end up seeing Oklahoma City versus Minnesota in the finals, and you're wondering which one of, the, one of these teams – I mean, both of them – not one of them is older than the other, but in terms of playoff experience, both of them are neophytes, right? So it's one of those things where, you know, some, you can do it. I saw Oklahoma City do it with Kevin Durant. Uh, Russell Westbrook right. and James Harden, like against the Miami Heat team. Talent-wise, I think Oklahoma City was more talented than Miami that year. But Russell Westbrook, after game two, went up to the podium, and I remember this like it was yesterday, and he said, you know, the, the, the lights were a little too bright for right. us. Like, we got to adjust to this. And I do think there's some of that. And, uh, you know, they have to be healthy. I don't think they have any margin for error if Oklahoma City can get through. But I tell you what, man, they have depth and they have – waves of talent. If somebody could do it, I think they could probably crack it. Um, but I don't see that happen. I, I, I just don't see anybody getting past Denver in a seven-game series. And when that happens, then you know, maybe I'll change my mind. Well, that's what Patrick Beverly said. He yeah. said, I just don't yeah. see them beating Denver. Yeah. Like, it's not yeah. – it, he, he, he sort of backpedaled a little bit. Like, nothing against them. They're, they're you know. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. But I just yeah. don't – Denver will be in their way, and I don't see them getting past them. Which, uh, the Western Conference is, is sort of but interesting. Shea, see, that's the other thing. The more I say it – then I'm like, man, I wouldn't SGA, rule it out. SGA gets 12, yes. 15 free throws a yes, game, yes. right? Um, Chet Holmgren is not afraid of the moment mm -hmm. at all. And then you got Jalen Williams is playing like – he's playing like young Harden right. in terms of how he's attacking and just relentless. They could do it, right? Man. Like, I'm not – I gonna, wouldn't rule yeah, it out. Yeah. They're not going to make me look like a fool. But it's, what's interesting out. in the West, it's like you've got Minnesota's 52 wins already, mm -hmm. Oklahoma City 52 wins already, and yet it feels like nobody believes – in anybody in mm -hmm. the playoffs other than Denver in the West. Everybody mm -hmm. says, yeah, they're mm -hmm. good. Oh, they've taken mm -hmm. a step. SGA's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or Minnesota, wow, they really found something. But nobody believes any of these teams can get yeah. past Denver, which yeah. is interesting. That's interesting. Um, if I had to, outside of Denver, if I had to say who is my, who would I put my mortgage on um, if I had to, you know, risk <laughs> getting foreclosed yeah. on my mortgage, right? I, I would, I would, I would lean more towards Minnesota if they're healthy because I think they're capable of playing styles as dynamic as they need to play. They can, they definitely can defend. Um, if they're healthy, which means they have Cat, they have Mike Conley, they have uh, obviously Ant Edwards, that team is so dynamic and multiple that they can play a number of different styles. So my dark horse, and I'm not I'm saying dark horse and they're number the top three in the West, but out of those questionable teams, Minnesota will be the favorite beyond Denver for me. Um, but – I, can you count out the Clippers if they're healthy going yeah. into the playoffs? You know, the Lakers, could they get hot like they did in the in-season tournament and maybe push their way through? Like, it's, it's hard to bet against any of these teams with any certainty. Last thing before I let you go, the reigning MVP returned to the court last night, Joel Embiid. It was interesting yeah. because Woj reported, I guess, Monday night that mm -hmm. he was expected to return, and then mm -hmm. Embiid was still listed as out mm -hmm. as of yesterday morning. Did not go through walkthrough, um, shoot around, but... 
did play in the game, uh, finished with 24 points, seven assists, six mm-hmm. rebounds. I don't know that you you saw it, but mm-hmm. what did you make mm-hmm. of, of Embiid's return to the Sixers? And, and the game-winning steal. Yeah. The clinching steal at the end of that game in the final seconds. And, um, you know, I, oh, oh, out of uh, he, he picked uh, Josh Giddy in the final seconds of that game to secure that win. I thought that he, he still looked lumbering and sluggish, but he always looks that way to me, uh, even when he's healthy. I, just the fact that he was there, they did it at home, it gave them a, a shot in the arm. I don't know if that's going to keep them out of the play in. They might have to still back their way into it. But if Embiid is on the floor and, you know, they have some of the veterans that they can get out there too, man, I mean, they're going to be a tough out, but I just don't think they have enough. Even when they were healthy, I didn't think they had enough. Um, but it's good to see him back. He's risking a lot. I don't think he, I want to say, did he have the surgery? Mm-hmm. He had a so he had, yeah. he had the surgery and came back within the season. Um, nobody questions Embiid's heart, man. Yeah. And you've known him for for years, like right. Yeah, I mean, into, I knew him when he was in college. In, I spent, in college. I, I, that's what I'm no saying. No way, is a, a stretch. I mean, but, but I, you've I spent, been around. I've him. been around. Yeah, him. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You've been around him, and you know how 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 much of a gentle giant he is, yeah. right? And but for him to face all the injuries that he's faced throughout his career, derailing the first two years of his career, and for him to still be there standing like that as the an- franchise uh, anchor, man, that says a lot about him. I'm looking forward to seeing him when they come uh, to play the Grizzlies on Saturday. I went to see him. Um, and not, I didn't go to see him. I went to Kansas to see Andrew Wiggins when they yeah, were they, they were, were both teammates. freshmen. Yeah, yeah. And we had named Andrew Wiggins the preseason CBS Sports National Player of the Year because uh-huh. he was an incredible high school prospect. prospect absolutely. And yeah. um, they're, uh, it's preseason. They hadn't played a game yet. I'm at practice. And after practice at Kansas, I'm just sort of sitting in the side of the gym with Bill Self, Curtis Townsend, uh, you know, the Kansas staff. Mm-hmm. And Embiid's out on the court doing individual work with a manager. Mm -hmm. Just getting a a workout in, individual workout in. And I'm just sitting here and and Bill's self at some point. So this would have been like, you know, before Wiggins, Embiid's freshman season even began. And he said, so you're working on a story on Wiggs. And I said, right. And he goes, and you guys are naming him the National Player of the Year? And I said, yeah. And he goes, goes, that's interesting. And I said, said, whoa, you don't think it's right? He goes, no, I mean, I guess it could be. I don't know. I mean, it could be. He's great. And I said, "Uh, okay. And he goes, but I'm telling you, yeah. the best player I will have ever coached when this is all over is that guy. Wow. wow. And I wow. and he points yeah. to Joel Embiid. Yeah. And you got to remember, Embiid was not like top no, five player no. in his class mm-hmm. or anything like. Mm-hmm. He was a five star guy. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I just I'll never forget that moment. He said, Joel Embiid will be the best player I've ever coached. He's not even the best player in this recruiting class, according to the recruiting analyst. Right. But I'm right. telling you, he's the best player I will ever coach. Wow. And wow. Embiid would have been the number one pick in that draft instead of Wiggins if he did not have gotten hurt. Right. It, right. It, like there right. was a moment in like January where it became clear, like that's the number one pick. And right. then he, and then he right. got hurt, never played in the NCAA tournament. And uh, that was that. But he's lived up to what oh, Bill's. Yeah. It, oh, yeah. All these years later, he is the best player Bill Self's ever coached. That is true. He yeah. worked out that way. That yeah. foresight, man, and and the skill set that he has at his size. I mean, he's got a lot of Elijah Wan in him yes. when it comes to that, but he's just a bigger guy. Yeah. Um, man, I, I love Joel Embiid, and I, I like the way that he's withstood all of the things he stayed, had to go through in Philly. And I, ho- I hope for their sake that they can get a breakthrough. I just don't know if he's going to win a championship. There. I would like to see him do it. I yeah. don't know if it'll happen, but yeah. I'd, you know, I'd like to see it. Yeah. Yep. Mike Wallace, I appreciate you, baby. Anytime, man. Anytime. On X at my Mike Check. You can find him, of course, grindcitymedia.com. Everything's there, grindcitymedia.com. I appreciate your time. When we come back, turn our attention to college football. Ryan Silverfield signed a contract extension with the University of Memphis. It's essentially five years, $12.25 million. We'll get into that next. It's the Gary Parish Show presented by Ortho South. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power On Board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Class is full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Are you a healthcare professional looking for a new experience? Look no further than Travel Nurses, Inc. 
Our extensive network of healthcare facilities across the country offers you the opportunity to discover new destinations while pursuing your passion. We provide competitive compensation, flexible contracts, and dedicated assistance. So join our community of nurses and allied health professionals and start your next adventure today. Visit our website at travelnursesinc.com for more information. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Orthopedic injuries can be unpredictable, unforeseen, and unscheduled. And Ortho South understands this better than anyone. Since your injuries don't make appointments, you don't need to either. That's because Ortho South welcomes walk-ins during the weekdays, in the evenings, and even on Saturday. So next time an unforeseen injury makes an unscheduled appearance in your life, visit orthosouth.org to find your nearest urgent care location. Just walk in. And Ortho South is going to take care of everything, especially you. Learn more at orthosouth.org. Dot org. That's orthosouth at orthosouth.org. Now, I got five more things you need to know. Number one. Ryan Silverfield has signed a contract extension with the University of Memphis. It's essentially a five-year, $12.25 million deal. It's a pay raise annually. And the buyout remains the same. The buyout being 60% of the amount of money left on the contract. So I should rephrase. The buyout doesn't remain the same it's more money today than it would have been say a week ago but uh the the parameters of the buyout remain the same it's just the contract is worth more now than it previously was big bet bennett are you are you you're going to support this ryan silverfield contract uh, extension absolutely um i think it's deserved and i think that you know the important thing right now and why i think it's important to lock him up is a he's got a good team coming in mm -hmm. um and 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 he was due for a deal um, and they've got a chance to possibly make this college football playoff this year with the expanded playoff. Um, you look at their schedule, and nothing scares you as far as conference play goes necessarily. So they got a chance to make some noise this year. I think also it's just important for right now in this moment for the University of Memphis and their big-time athletic programs, specifically football and men's basketball, to have stability and you get that with Ryan. Like, you're going to get to a ball game every year. You're going to have some form of success every year with Ryan. I don't. I know that people want to win the conference every year. I think that should be the expectations in this conference. But regardless, you're going to have a level of success with Ryan Silverfield as your head coach. I think we've seen enough to know that uh, right now. So, yeah, I think it's deserved, man. I'm totally good with it. If you want to say it's deserved, you're totally good with it. That's fine with me. And I'm happy for Ryan. And I don't think it's a big deal in any way whatsoever other than I'm happy for Ryan. Mm -hmm. I will say, if just strictly from a business perspective, I got it. strictly from a business perspective, there's no point to it. You didn't have to do it. Unless you just want to say, as his employer, we appreciate him as an employee. And we want to make sure, not that he remains the coach at the University of Memphis, because you ready for this? Mm. You didn't need to do this to ensure he remains the coach at the University of Memphis. It's April 3rd. He ain't going nowhere. But sure. if you want to ensure that he is happy, not resentful, not feeling like he's owed something he isn't getting, then that should be the motivation behind it. And that stuff is important stuff. The thing that I roll my eyes at is when – universities, athletic directors, fans, or coaches act like this stuff is necessary. Ryan only had two years left on his contract before this extension was signed, is my understanding. 
the contract was through the end of 2025. Mm -hmm. And what coaches have said for years and their agents have said for years is, well, you, you can't just have two years left on a contract because you can't go out there and recruit because you've got to be able to tell young people and their parents, hey, I, I, don't worry about it. I've got a five-year contract. I'm going to be here. Except that was never true. It never meant anything. It, uh, signing a five-year contract does not mean you're going to be anywhere in five years. It, it just means that that's the amount of years you have on a contract, and that's the amount of money you have in a contract. And then there's always a buyout clause. So the, it, it never meant what anybody said it meant. And so once it's not actually as presented, then it just comes down to, do you want to take care of people or not? And if they just want to take care of Ryan to, to show appreciation for a job well done. And I do think that even though the season was relatively speaking, a disappointment, the guy did go to a bowl game, win a bowl game over a big 12 opponent, um, win a lot of games and lose to no bad teams. He probably was running one of the top 40 college football teams in America this mm -hmm. this past season. And I know it can be disappointing when you're not playing for a conference championship. And I actually think it was disappointing that they didn't find themselves in some of the places we thought might be possible. But just broadly speaking, if you are a Memphis fan frustrated by being a top 40 football program in America, like you're, you've maybe set the bar a little too high. Yeah, I, I, I could nitpick it if you want me to, and I did throughout the season. But just broadly speaking, it don't it it will never be, or it's hard to imagine it, or it's never been. Maybe that's just the right mm -hmm. way to put it. Consistently much better than what it was this past season. There's been higher moments. There's been way lower ones. But it's never been consistently much better than than what it just was. And if you want to reward him for that, I'm fine with it. But the idea that you had to do it, uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. And it's never made any sense to me. And this is where universities get themselves in bad, bad issues all the time by giving out contract extensions when they are unnecessary. So, like, let's just for just to make sure I'm I'm, I'm making this clear, the point I'm trying to make. There's a human element to all of this stuff about just taking care of employees and important people and making sure they feel appreciated and properly compensated. You never want negative stuff to build up. So like all of that stuff matters, but if you could take all that stuff and put it aside, there's no need to give a contract extension right now. It's a, it's April. He ain't going anywhere. All right. And I know w what you said, like might be part of the motivation. Like, well, I think he's going to have a good team and we need to get out in front of this. Well, this ain't like locking up a basketball player in the NBA. Like, if you lock up Steph Curry on a long-term contract when he's coming off a bad ankle, well, then that contract's just locked in. Like, Steph Curry ain't coming back to you and, 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 and renegotiating it. College coaching contracts don't work like that. You don't really lock up anybody. Trust me, I know that somebody might, well, you lock him up before he's about to go to the college football playoff next year, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let, just understand if he goes to the college football playoff next year, you're going to have to redo this contract again. If he goes more likely, if he goes to the college football playoff next season, some bigger school and a bigger league is going to come after him, and it won't matter that you redid this contract. That's, that's It won't fair. keep him from going to the next big thing. So practically speaking, it, it's unnecessary and possibly counterproductive because all it means because let's let's play the other side of it it won't keep him from making the next big job that's simple that's obvious any more than it kept justin fuente or mike norvell all right so you're just bidding against nobody because once it gets into the real bidding you can't win that anyway all right so that's if things go well if things go poorly what have you done you just made it where you got to pay more money to go away It'd cost you more money than it otherwise would cost you to make him go away if things go poorly. So if things go well, this won't keep him. And if things go poorly, it's just going to cost you more money. Like from a strictly business decision, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But in this world of college athletics where universities do things with coaching contracts all the time that don't make any sense whatsoever, it's pretty, it's pretty common. So I'm happy for Ryan. And uh, hopefully it's uh, – hopefully it's uh, – not something anybody yeah. regrets someday. I mean, the the when I was saying um, 
you know, it's important to have stability right now. What what I mean is, I, I don't. I think we both think that conference realignment is not necessarily done. I mean, you look at what's going on in the ACC right now with Clemson and Florida sure. State. There was the the thing about the lawsuit uh, that one of them filed. I think it was maybe Clemson. Yeah, yeah, yeah like that um, league could fall apart. I don't know yeah. any day, but like people are trying to tear it apart. I'll put it that way. And so I think the worst thing that could happen for Memphis football right now is a bad season mm-hmm. in the midst of all that. That would be disastrous. Like they need to be a competitive football team for the next, you know few seasons oh, I agree least. with every bit of, yeah, of that yeah, I guess yeah. I guess the point I'm trying to make and I, I hope I'm not belaboring it I don't mean to um I'm happy for Ryan that that's my main point I'm just saying they don't need to have a bad season right now I agree yeah this contract extension has no impact on that whatsoever whether they have a great season or a bad season or something in between has nothing to do with the contract that, that was announced yesterday it will be, I'm happy man I'm happy too I think I said that I'm happy man I, I'm happy too I just what I'm trying to say is that I, I find it fascinating that we've reached a point in college athletics where universities so routinely give out contracts that are unnecessary. You do not have to do this. Often it backfires on you. But given that this is the world that we operate in, it's pretty ordinary. I got yeah. I that, get that. That, that, that a coach like Ryan Silverfield would get a contract extension like this. So let's just be happy that he got it yep. and, uh, and, and root for him. And hope that it turns out well. Let's just do that, all right? Let's do it. All right, that's what I'll do. Number two. Hey, DJ Burns, he's the star face of this uh, Final Four. He's headed down to Phoenix with NC State. And now there's uh, multiple reports uh, that say NFL franchises might be in attendance just to watch him move around. And that they would eventually like to work him out. Because even if DJ Burns, the six foot nine, 275 pound front court star for the Wolfpack, doesn't have an NBA future, there are people who think he might have a football future, even though he has not played organized football since he was a child. What do you think? I think when you first hear that, my first reaction is, okay, yeah, right. Like, that's not – there's a complete difference between – looking like an uh, an NFL player and being an NFL sure. player. <laughs> um, so that's the first thing that pops off. I will say, though, man. But do you I, know what you know the most important thing of being an NFL player is? Huh? Looking like one. That's true. And So I, he's got the first part down. And, like, what do they say about offensive linemen? Like, you got to be able to be big and light on your feet. Well, he, he can do that. So That's what they see. That's what they, that's what yeah, they see. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, it's, I think, a long shot. But I understand why they're intrigued because football is the easiest sport to learn. Just as somebody who has children, you'll you'll realize this as your children get older. If they're not in baseball early, can't play. If they're not in basketball pretty early, can't play. You got to get that stuff pretty early. And yes, unless you're uniquely tall, mm-hmm. like if you're just like the six foot four seventh grader, right. you could probably pick it up in seventh grade. But like you ain't picking baseball up in seventh grade. You you might not pick baseball up at eight years old. I mean, you got to really be in it early. But you know what you can pick up late in life? Being a running back, being a defensive lineman, being a wide receiver. Because the most important aspects of that are just physical tools. And so anytime somebody has the physical tools, um, there's always going to be somebody in the NFL interested in looking at it and exploring it. It's why... If LeBron James would have at any point in his 20s just decided he wanted to play football, he would have been signed to an NFL contract. Mm. Just get him over here and we'll figure it out. It's why if Russell Westbrook at the age of 20 would have decided, I want to be a football player, somebody would have tried to turn him into one just off of his physical tools. So I would consider it a long shot, but this kind of stuff has happened before and not that long ago. I was at a VCU practice. 2017, maybe, mm-hmm. early in the season. This is Shaka Smart still there. And they had a player named Mo Alley Cox. He was a basketball player. I know him well. You certainly do. Mo Alley Cox had not played football since he was a freshman in high school. And I'm at this practice. And, you know, there's Celtics representatives there and Wizards representatives there. I'm making things up. But, like, there's NBA people in the gym. And then there was a scout there from the Washington, what we now know as the Washington Commanders. 
Now, keep in mind, VCU is Richmond, Virginia. It's close to D.C. Yeah. So it made sense. The guy just probably had to get in a car and drive, you know, hour and a half, whatever it is. So I'm talking to this scout from the Washington Commanders. And I'm like, so, because Shock had already told me, like, the, yeah, they're, it, command, you know, the Washington football franchise is here. Mm-hmm. They're coming to see Mo Alley. Just watch him run up and down the court. That's all they wanted to see. Just look at him in person and see him move around. And I'm sitting next to this scout from the Washington Commanders. And uh, we're just talking, whatever. Mm. And at some point I said, so what do you think? And I'll, I'll never forget. This is exactly what he said. Well, that's certainly what they look like. Mm-hmm. Meaning that's what, that's what I came to see. He looks the way I wanted him to look. Mo'Ally Cox, I think, just finished his sixth year in the NFL with the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah. Now he is like a freak. Like yes, that, dude, that dude's build is different. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's – but like this – that's a perfect example. No major league baseball franchise would ever watch the NCAA tournament and think we need to explore this because the sports are so different and what you need to do to flourish in one isn't necessary in the other, vice versa. But with football, it is such a physical game with like just rooted in athleticism and speed and strength more so than any other game, that you can take somebody who doesn't play football, but if they can do the things that it takes to play football, you can maybe teach them those things. Mm. And so he'll get a shot. I don't know where it goes, but he'll get a shot. If he wants to be in an NFL something this when he finishes this, this basketball career at NC State or whenever he finishes his basketball career, he'll have an opportunity to do that. Number three. Live with Kelly and Mark. Oh, there's been a lot of live with Kelly's and somebody's, haven't you? I know. Kelly's had a lot of co-hosts. She has. Regis. She, Ryan. Ryan. Michael Strahan, wasn't Michael he? Michael Strahan. Yeah, she's had a lot. She runs through those co-hosts. Hmm. I like Kelly, though. I do, too. Now, I know Michael Strahan said that they clashed a little bit. I like Kelly Ripa. I like Kelly Ripa. She's I don't fun. know her. She's got a fun personality. She seems like it. Uh-huh. Seems fun. Yep. I don't know her at all. She might be the devil for us now. But uh, I like what I know. I like what I see. I like what I hear. Every time I see her interviewed, I go, "That's it." You ever see people interviewed and like totally change your opinion of them? Sure, I do too. There, I, I think so. Yeah, there are multiple people. I really enjoy their Instagram feeds, but then I see them get interviewed. You know, they're like, "Hey, and tonight our guest on Jimmy Fallon mm. is this person," and it makes me not love their Instagram feeds anymore. Hmm. You know. I just like them better on Instagram. Got an example you care to share? Yeah, but I don't want to put that out into the world. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. But like I, I've broken up with some Instagram models over their appearances on late night talk shows. Gotcha. I go, man, I really like you on Instagram, but I didn't really like this conversation so much. You know? Mm-hmm. My point with Kelly Ripa is she never done that to me. No. I see Kelly Ripa have conversations. I go, I like Kelly Ripa. All right. I don't know why she's going through all these co-hosts all the time. But I like what I know of her. Yeah. Okay? Well, now she's doing the show with her husband. How do you think that works? They seem happy, though, don't they? They seem to like each other a lot. They're always talking about doing it. They are always talking about doing it. And you know what's weird? It's kind of gross to hear old people always talking about doing it. You know, I think when I was... They ain't your typical old people. I know. But They're think, good looking old people. I, they really are. Yeah. But I think when I was young, I used to talk about doing it and stuff like that. You know, yeah. I used to tell stories. And then I remember being young and hearing somebody my age. Right. And I was like, what is that old man doing? Yeah. That's and so gross. I just stopped. Yeah. I just stopped. I was like, I can't talk. Like, I can't. Nobody needs to hear that from a bald person, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I got it. Nobody needs to hear that yep. from me. All right. But when I watch Kelly and Mark talk about doing it, I don't feel like I'm. They're older than me. And it doesn't seem out of place. No, it doesn't. They're beautiful people. They are. And they seem to like holding each other, don't they? Mm-hmm. They talk about it all the time. They and talk it, about it all the time. And it doesn't come across as gross. And it's strictly because they're not gross. Right? I think so. I think you're right. Okay. Anyway, they're on vacation. Okay. They're probably doing it right now. That's got to be a weird dynamic, too, is because, I mean, you can't, you like, when you're when you're on vacation, I mean, they're going on all their vacations together, so you got to you got to replace everybody on that set. Or just run reruns. Oh, is that what they're doing? Oh, they are. Okay. And they got into some hot water yesterday. What happened? Do you hear what happened? No. Oh, they re-aired an episode from like 
March. Uh, no, maybe, I don't know, earlier in the year. Yeah. Earlier in the year. And it's Kelly Ripa talking to, you know, she's interviewing somebody. Mm -hmm. And uh, the woman, it's an actress. I, her name escapes me right now. Mm -hmm. But she's interviewing this woman. And she's in, they're talking about whatever they're talking about. And the woman goes, oh, yeah, I was just on my brother Puff's yacht. And Kelly Ripa goes, you were on Diddy's yacht, boat? And she's like, yeah. And she goes, oh, next time you get an invitation to Diddy's party, <laughs> Diddy's boat, make sure to invite me and Mark. And she's like, you got it. Yeah. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. As someone who's put <laughs> together multiple best of shows in my lifetime, I can I, I feel for the producer there because – I if, on a way smaller scale, but I've been in that situation where like people have messaged me and been like, I don't know what it was like. Uh, Ryan Silverfield got that contract weeks ago. Uh, what are you talking? About? You know, things, something, yeah. just something like that. So I feel for the producer, but I feel like you gotta, yeah, you gotta, you gotta watch it. You like, gotta watch I, that. I, I know how it happened. Somebody was like, Hey, remember when Kelly and Mark had so and so on? Wasn't she great? Let's just re-air that. And then they forgot that moment in that. Mm -hmm. It'd be like if if uh, somebody said, "Hey, remember that interview Kelly and Michael Strahan did with uh, so and so fifteen years ago? We should pull that back up. It was great." And then they re-air it without watching it. And in that interview, they're talking to somebody, and the person's like, "Yeah, so I was at Jeffrey Epstein's house." And you're like, "Whoa, that can't be! <laughs> <laughs> you can't! Whoa!" Oh, That's what happened dang. to Kelly and Mark yesterday. Do they, we can confirm they're not on vacation on Diddy's yacht, right? I hope not. I don't even know how they would have access to that right now. I, I think, think all that stuff's frozen. I, think, I don't think you can get on his yacht right now. I think even if you had plans to go on Diddy's yacht, you'd cancel those plans now, wouldn't you? I mean, it's a yacht. It is a yacht. It's a yacht, dude. It is a yacht. Like, if somebody invited me on a yacht, I don't know. Interesting it, situation. It'd take a lot for me to turn it if down. If Diddy, if you got a phone call today. Yeah. And somebody said, Big Bet Bennett. Yes. What are you up to this weekend? And you said, I don't know. And they said, uh, hey, I need you on a plane. We're going to party at Diddy's. Would you go? Yes. <laughs> yes. I think I would have to go. You can't go. It'd make for a, a, a great story. It probably would. Also, possibly I felonies. could get in trouble, though. It could be felony. It could lead to felony. Well, no, I'd leave when I started seeing weird stuff. And plus, like, what's the point in going to a Diddy party if you ain't going to see the weird stuff? Here's the thing, though, is right now he ain't doing weird stuff. You don't know. The weird stuff's been put on hold, dude. Uh, so weird, weird people can't stop doing weird stuff sometimes. I think, I think I'd be going to, like, the most uh, PG Diddy party of all time. I so mean, I maybe, but maybe, maybe. Sometimes weird people can't help themselves from being weird. You can tell them all the time, hey, hey, don't be weird. It's time to stop being weird, and they can't stop. Okay, I, th I think I told you this the other day. You have to go watch that movie, Get Him to the Greek, yeah. with Jonah Hill right. and Russell Brand because Diddy. By the way, they all are weird. <laughs> They're I all like weird. Jonah Hill. No, I, I don't like know, but Jonah, Jonah Hill's weird. He is. He's done some weird stuff in a good way. Kind of weird. He's a good dude. He's a good dude. I think. I don't know. He's had some. I, I like Jonah Hill. Okay, just so we don't have to argue about Jonah Hill. Uh huh. Russell Brand, Jonah Hill, and now Diddy have all been caught up in some weird shit. That's true. All right. Them two way more than Jonah, though. We can, we sure. can acknowledge that. All right. But Diddy plays in this movie like a caricature of himself. And he's literally like Diddy, but like acting insane and doing drugs and like trying to kill people. It's, like, it's, it, it's so like when you rewatch it, you're like, Wait, is that really him? No, he's like, just is that is he just being himself? hiding in plain sight? Yeah, he was hiding in plain sight. Yeah. So Bennett wants to go to a Diddy party. That's interesting. I think I'd go right now in this moment. I think I'd go. Yeah, I think I'd pass. But I'd like, you know, I'd like to go. If you could tell me nobody'd find out, I'd go. I'd just be scared people would find out and start to ask questions. But if yeah. I could do it on the low, you know. Yeah. I might go with you, Bennett. Well, I hope Kelly and Mark are having a good vacation. They're probably doing it right now. So they're probably doing it. They'll probably come back and talk about them doing it on vacation in their next episode. Yeah. So. Can't wait for that. Yep. Good all for right. them. Yeah, good for them. Number four. McDonald's All-American game was last night. You didn't even know, Bennett. Cooper Flag was on TV last night. You didn't even care. I had no clue. Okay. And I used to watch it religiously, man. Like, okay. McDonald's All-American game's on tonight. Let's go. Well, let me tell you why you probably didn't watch it mm -hmm. last night. All right? 
Um, Memphis has nothing in there, right? That used to be a draw. Every once in a while, Memphis would have a player That's in true. the McDonald's All-American game. That's we ain't true. got nothing like that. Um, it also comes after we've just been watching Thursday basketball, Friday basketball, Saturday basketball, Sunday basketball, mm-hmm. Monday basketball. God, I need a break, all right? So McDonald's All-American game kind of gets overshadowed. You know what I think the biggest deal was? We used to watch that game, and you would go, these three guys are going to Duke. I guess Duke's going to be the best team in the country next year. These four guys are going to Kentucky. I guess Kentucky's going to be the best team in the country next year. Now you watch that game last night, and you know what you say? I bet you some guys out of the transfer portal are going to be on the best team in the country next year. Mm -hmm. Look at the Final Four right now. Yeah, who is the five-star freshman? Stephon Castle at UConn, but he's not their best player. He's not their second best player, you know? NC State's got nothing. Purdue's got Zach Eady as a as an NBA prospect, but there's no freshmen that matter there. Alabama, it's mostly older guys. Yep. It's not some five star freshman who's about to be a top five pick. Brandon Miller's not on this team. Right, right. So the freshmen have not been a big story in college basketball this year. And I think it's because freshmen are having less of an impact. Because what, what used to happen is like two or three of the best freshmen in the country, they team up and go somewhere. Well, now guess what happens when they do that? Used to Jaleel Okafor, Tyus Jones, and who's our guy who played here? Justice Winslow? Mm-hmm. They would all decide we're going to go to school together. We're all five-star freshmen. We're going to go to school together. And you know what they would do? They'd win a national championship. Mm-hmm. Now those three guys go to school together. And you know what they do? Lose to a team that's got four guys out of the transfer portal. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think freshmen having less of an impact on the, on the sport, broadly speaking, is taking away. Like, high school rankings matter less than they've ever mattered. High school recruiting classes. Like, Missouri's got a third-best recruiting class in the country right now. Mm -hmm. I won't even have them ranked in the preseason because I don't think you can take all those freshmen and win in college basketball, not at any sort of meaningful level. Like, Reed Shepard was your national freshman of the year. It came off Kentucky's bench. So I just think the freshmen are less important than they've ever been now. They're still just as awesome in terms of, you know, NBA potential and all that stuff. But freshmen are so less important than they've ever been, and it makes the McDonald's All-American thing, game feel less mm-hmm. important than it's ever been. That's why it happened last night, and most people didn't even watch it. Number five. Voters in Kansas City rejected a sales tax yesterday designed to help build and or renovate stadiums for the Royals and the Chiefs. So this was put to a vote in Kansas City. Yep. And it was a small little tax. And we're going to take these hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars, and use them to build the Royals a new stadium and renovate Arrowhead. And the voters said, no, we're not raising taxes to give money to billionaires. If the Royals want to build a new stadium, they have a billionaire owner, they should do it. And if the Chiefs want to renovate Arrowhead Stadium, well, they have a billionaire owner, they should do it. And so Kansas City leaders, community leaders, have responded by saying, We'll figure it out. Don't panic. We're going to figure something out. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of a wild move. Yeah. Because I understand on a basic level, a community, a city, taxpayers telling billionaires, why should we pay for this when you so clearly have the money to do it yourself? I get that on another planet. The problem is that that is only an effective strategy in negotiating if nobody else is willing to do for them what you are unwilling to do for them. In other words, if the Chiefs and Royals say, if you want us, you got to do this, and you say, we're not doing that, and then everybody else will also say, we're not doing that, well, then you're in a good place. The problem is that's not the world we live in. I don't want to jump seven steps ahead of where we're at. But there is a scenario where you can get to a place where the Chiefs are like, does anybody want to build us a stadium? How many cities do you think line up to do that? All of them. Yep. There's a scenario where the Royals say, anybody want to build us a stadium? Somebody do it. That's the problem with 
taking hardline stances. And that's the issue we are facing in Memphis right now with FedEx Forum. I get it when you don't think taxpayers should be supplementing facilities for billionaire owners of professional sports franchises. I understand that in a vacuum. We don't live in a vacuum. This is a classic thing that can relate to any number of things in life. If you don't do it, somebody else will. So you better do it or else somebody else will. I just think this is a dangerous way to negotiate with sports franchises because there, there is a city out there. It might not be Kansas City, but there's a city out there that would be happy to build a brand new bazillion dollar football stadium to have an NFL franchise. So if you're Kansas City voters, you can say, we're not going to do this. But if your government officials don't figure out a way to do this, you will eventually lose that football team. Man, that would be insane. And it's why they won't do it. So they'll, no, they'll, of course. It's, they'll it's why the community out. leaders came out last night and were immediately like, we'll figure, we'd rather voters do this, you know, themselves. But if they're not, we'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. So they got to figure, but they do have to figure it out. Yes. I just, it's such a waste of time when I hear people argue about this stuff. I don't think taxpayers should be funding arenas and stadiums. For billionaire owners. Okay, cool. But it doesn't matter what you think. Congratulations on thinking that. It doesn't matter what you think. It's just like, if you don't do it, these things will leave. There's a long history of, in professional sports in this country, if you don't do what they say, they'll leave. And if you are fine with them leaving, then absolutely. But you better make sure you're tough before you act tough. You better make sure you really don't care before you say you don't care. Because you start playing... There's always somebody else out there ready to ready to build what it is you say you want. So be careful, whether you're in Kansas City or Memphis, Tennessee. Be back with GP's carry out. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. LifeCare Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At LifeCare, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at LifeCareAMB.com. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power On Board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Class is full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Gasol with four seconds for the win. Yes! Marcus, one of the more competitive people you'll meet. He ain't lose. Their willingness to go out and try to compete every day, not just wait for a game, not wait for a regular season game, not wait for a playoff game, but every day is what made Marcus special. He was a big part of that identity, right? And big part of that's why the, the team was so successful, because they had that anchor in him. The Grizzlies, to this day, wouldn't be the Grizzlies without the contribution of Marcus Gasol. Welcome back, Gary P. 
Paris Show presented by Ortho South. We're inside the Bill Four Tough studio. We had some big NFL breaking news this morning. Yes, we did. I didn't fit it in five more things because it happened right before the show was about to start. But Stefan Diggs is no longer a member of the Buffalo Bills. What do you make of that, Big Bet Bennett? Yeah, he's going to uh, the Houston Texans uh, for draft pick compensation. So the Bills uh, had salary cap issues and clearly that, and they unloaded some <clears throat> major pieces already this offseason, but they still had to uh, had to make room. Um, they still had to get under the cap, um, and I guess this is part of it. Uh, I mean, I would not feel great if I was a Bills fan today just because he's kind of been your centerpiece in this run that they've been on. What happened to him and Josh Allen? Did they hate each other? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, I, there was clearly a rift. Uh, I heard they at hate some each other. Point. Um, That's what I heard. Somebody told me they hate each other. crazy because remember that video that went viral of them on the field and like Diggs starts crying like he's like, like Josh Allen's like, I'm thankful for you, man. Or, and, and Diggs is like, I'm thankful for you too. You'll never know. Yeah, like, I think, like, yeah. Yeah. I think, well, you know. I've, I've, and then you lose some games. Yeah. And, and yeah. I've been thankful. For, shit happens. I've, I've been thankful for people before and then, and then realize, <laughs> and then realize right. I, no, I no longer am. Um, I've, I've, I've gone through that. So I, I think I wouldn't feel great if I was a Bills fan today. However, it's not like he had an amazing year last year. He did not have a Stephon Diggs season last year. So are you getting out in front of it before he starts to decline? Or is this just something you had to do because you had no choice because you had cap issues? Um, I think I'd probably still lean towards the latter, but they'll they're gonna draft somebody in this first round. Like they'll they'll draft a, a wide receiver, it appears, in the first round, and we'll see how much it ends up mattering for them as far as their Super Bowl aspirations. Now, as far as the Texans go... Isn't receiver like a position where you really can just go like add an all-pro guy in the first round? I think it's... I think that it's... Trying to win a Super Bowl with a rookie wide receiver seems tough, but I don't know, man. I, you know, they've still got a good team. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. And they've still got a couple good guys there. Um They've got two really good tight ends, so we'll see. As far as the Texans go, yeah, I mean, I that their offense looks scary right now. I mean, what do you want me to say? Diggs doesn't even have to be their best receiver. Uh, they still got Nico Collins, so and Tank Dell, so yeah, that and that's what that, you do when you have a young star quarterback, sucks. right? You give them, yeah. you give it, you give him, you give him weapons, right? So they're giving their young quarterback weapons. Yeah, man, that offense is going to be scary. I mean, they were this past year, so again, I'm still. I'm excited about what the Titans are doing. I still don't have big expectations coming into this season. Um, I'm looking towards, you know, a year from now. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Hey, we'll see. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I ain't scared. Con Bennett says he's not scared. I'm not scared either. All right. Let's do GP's carry on. It's time for GP's carry out. One final segment filled with stuff to take with you. It's not everything you need to know, but it's most of it. What did we learn today? A whole bunch of stuff, but can I hit you with some more breaking news? What's up? Angel Reese has declared for the WNBA draft. That's not surprising. You didn't think she wanted to come back for one more year? No. No. I think she's ready to uh, <clears throat> to kick start her stardom. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, she already is a star. She's but a star. I think she probably wants to take it to the next level, make a little money, and... Uh, we already know Caitlin Clark's going to the WBA. Right. She's already announced that. And Paige Becker's already announced she's coming back. That's interesting. Yeah. If you win the championship, yeah. like if UConn wins the title, yeah. why would – my whole thing with this is we, we just talked about this historic um, women's NCAA tournament, and now you got Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark going to the WNBA. Like if I'm Paige – I kind of want to go because now you're taking this thing to a different sport, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, it could it could make the WNBA a, a bigger deal like, than it if, already is because you, you took, have these big rivalries and these big stars. What that if you are, took all of these things to the WNBA at the same time? Yeah, and I'm and I don't. I mean, they already have a lot of big stars in the WNBA, but I'm saying this group of girls all coming in at the same time. I, I think it's a big that. deal. I yeah, could get yeah. behind that. So uh, Angel Reese has made herself eligible for the WNBA draft. She's expected. To be a top 10 pick. What's today's biggest game? Also, real quick, Lee makes the point. It's true. Uh, she probably wants to be the number one overall pick. Paige, Paige. Becker. And, she does, and she's not going to be in this draft. No. It's going to be Kaylin. Yeah, right? Maybe. maybe. Yeah. I, I would not pretend to know Paige Becker's motivation. I just know that she has, a, she has missed a lot of time at UConn. Maybe that's a factor, too. Right. Like, she's been hurt a lot. So, hey, whatever her motivation. I'm just happy she gets to make her own decisions, right? Yeah, me too. I'll be rooting for her no matter what. 
Grizzlies Bucks is your biggest game of the night. Seven o'clock. Fiserv Forum. It's up there in Milwaukee. Bucks are 13 and a half point favorites, Bennett. Jeez. I know. Whew. Totals 220.5. How are you going to act? 13 and a half? 13 and a half. God. Uh, yeah, I'll take the Bucks. What did we do last night? Lost. God, Bennett. The stupid Mavs. Why do you keep losing? Dude, they had won seven in a row. Funny business. They had won seven in a row. It was one and a half. Funny uh, business. I, and then the thing is, is I was feeling good at halftime because I think the Mavs were down like 12 or something like that. They came roaring back. Kyrie was hitting some big buckets before half. And so I was like, okay, we got this in the bag. I went to bed, and woke up today and saw what happened. Well, you know, maybe tonight will be better. Grizz Bucks. 13 and a half. Right, I mean, I got it. Uh, yeah, what do you want me to do? Jaron Jackson's coming off a 40 piece. They were playing the Pistons. I I'm saying he could still have a 40 piece tonight and they could still lose by 13. Sure. Or 14. Sure. So, I don't, I'm going to, 13 and a half. 13 and a half is a big number. I'll go Bucks. I'll, I'll go Bucks. All right. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm going. Okay. Bucks. Just keep keep picking against the Grizzlies your whole life. Yeah. Okay. That seems that seems smart. What are we watching on TV? I don't know where you think we work. <laughs> Be picking against the Grizzlies every day. I don't know where you think we work. I kind of want to change it. You think this is Buck City Media? Bennett thinks he works for Buck City Media. Giannis Giannis City Media. You think you work for Giannis City Media? I kind of want to change my yeah. pick. I, I give you the opportunity. No, I'm not going to do it. You think this is Dame City Media? You think this is Dame Time Media? I'm worried about Dame. He is a game time decision tonight. He'll play. Watch him not play. That's what's going to happen. What's your pick? It's I got to catch a plane. What's your pick? It's the Bucks. All right. It's the Bucks. Oh, somebody thinks they work for Brooke Lopez City Media. We're just going to go Bucks, And, <clears throat> I mean, I, I, I preface all of these with I don't feel good about it. All right. So, all yeah. right. Okay. What are we what watching? Are we watching on TV? Well, we got two things to watch. Big Glow. What's Big Glow doing? She's on Shannon Sharp's podcast. You know, the one that made Cat Williams. Uh, uh, where Cat Williams said a bunch of stuff. He was exposing folks. Yeah. Well, yeah. Now, now Big Glow's on it. So, if you want to watch Big Glow talk to Shannon Sharp, you can watch that podcast. And then tonight. 10.35 on NBC, Jimmy Fallon show. Oh, buddy. Guess who the guest is? Beyonce. Beyonce doesn't she talk. She wouldn't go on that. Beyonce does not talk to normal people. Yeah, that's she's bigger than that. Yeah, she, I think she, Taylor Swift she, goes on there. Yeah, but I think they're buddies. Beyonce, oh, okay. He's calling in a favor. Beyonce cannot go talk to Jimmy Fallon. Okay, fair enough. Beyonce's not even... Jimmy Fallon's not even allowed to speak to Beyonce. Yeah, he's not I even allowed it. to look at her. I got it. No, not Beyonce. It's not Diddy, is it? No. <laughs> what are you? Are you crazy? <laughs> yes, Diddy's going on Jimmy Fallon tonight. <laughs> Who's going on? Oh yeah, the Tribal Chief. Those fingers up. Get your one up. The Tribal Chief. Is he going to stay in character? I don't. He doesn't when he goes on ESPN. Yeah. I don't think he stays in character. Roman's. Uh, I. Maybe he'll like talk bad about Cody, but I don't think he'll be the tribal. The chief. Cody crybabies. I hate them. I the hate Cody crybabies. All y'all Cody crybabies. I'm sick of y'all. <laughs> I'm sick of y'all. The Rock will also be on Jimmy Fallon tonight. Really? Yes, really. It's WrestleMania week. We're Wait, on. so Roman's getting top billing? Well, they're together. They're the bloodline. I'm surprised you didn't come with The Rock will be on Jimmy Fallon tonight. I just like to get my one up. I like doing it slow, like this, like you know when he's when he get, when he first grabs the title, from. Okay, wait, hold on, hold on a second, because I'm ready to dig, get in the weeds here. Okay? okay, okay, where where can I find? I want to see, like who's listed first, Jimmy huh. Fallon tonight. It says it says, it says, the Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. Uh huh. Guest Dwayne Johnson, Roman Reigns, and uh, Emma Roberts. Okay, so The Rock got the top billing. Well, it, just says, it says Dwayne Johnson and Roman Reigns. It could just be in alphabetical order. I'm just going to say, like, what I was going to say is, is if it was Roman and The Rock, 
I don't think that'd sit well with Dwayne. It says Dwayne. It's going to be Dwayne Johnson and Roman Reigns. Are we going to get a betrayal on Saturday? Okay. Are we going to get a betrayal on Saturday? If we get a betrayal, the betrayal comes Sunday. The betrayal comes Sunday. Yes, yeah, Saturday's the beating. Saturday's another beating. Cody cry babies. Yeah, Make you're going to be crying big Make time. Make him bleed. You're going to be crying Make big time bleed. on Saturday. If there's a betrayal, the betrayal will come Sunday. And if it doesn't come Sunday, it will come at some point. <sighs> That's tonight, NBC. Yep. Yeah. What's the best thing we've read? Um, David Cobb, Memphis's own. David Cobb's got a nice piece on Matt Painter, Gene Cady, the relationship between them as Purdue heads to the Final Four for the first time since 1980. So if you haven't read that yet, go check it out, cbssports.com. What's on tap for tomorrow? Tomorrow's Thursday. Yep. I'm flying to Phoenix. You might have heard there's a Final Four there. Oh, there is. So I'm going there. And for a lot of different reasons. Kelsey Wright Johnson's hosting the show tomorrow. No, no, she's not. No, what? she's you, hosting Friday. You, oh no! Well, what's tomorrow? I don't even know. Tomorrow's yours truly. Big Ben Bennett. I'm sitting in the captain seat tomorrow. Big Ben Bennett's coming in the captain's chair. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. I'm gonna be in the captain's seat. Uh, my friend John Roser is John going Roser. to join me. Yes, we do Grizzlies post game live. If you didn't know, oh, uh, wow. so, so maybe we'll talk a little Grizz Bucks. Oh, this break gonna, it all down. Oh, they're right? gonna break down Grizz Bucks tomorrow. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be exciting. We might talk about it for five. If they lose by 14, we will spend five minutes. That's on gonna it. be exciting though. And then Kelsey on Friday. Yeah. Are you gonna come on with us? Yeah, I'll come on. Okay, with I you. might need you for a few minutes. I don't know where I'll be. Okay. Or, we'll or, or what I'll be doing. It's all good. But uh, you know, I'll be somewhere and I'll be doing something. And I don't see why I can't take time out of my busy day to talk to you. So, okay, good. So we'll do that. I could be I could be in the lobby of a hotel. I could be in a hotel room. I could be on set. I don't really know what I my schedule it. looks like now. I don't care. All right? But we're going to figure that out. Oh, I can't wait. Now I'm excited. Let's go. Let's go. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to enjoy mine. Meet back here tomorrow at 10. Till then, be careful, be kind, be good. <laughs> Rep your hood. <laughs>